Forty chess. Yeah. Forty chess. Huh. Forty chess. Let's get it. Forty chess. Huh. Forty chess. Hey. Hey. Forty chess. This a trade show. Patreon where the trades go. Tap in and watch. That's what you came for. Ain't gotta say my name. They know my name, bro. What's good, man? We got McNutted in ATM. Always start off the show with a trade from them. You should always make sure that your trade is in. Patreon, why not be a Patreon? Know you wish you could spend every day with them. Tap in and say what you gonna say with them. Stop home and can fill up a stadium. Next time you log in, make sure that you bring a friend. We about to kick off at the day begin. Go follow the socials. 40 chess FF is posted. If your trade is an F, you get roasted. Go like and subscribe for the crew. Apple, Spotify, and the YouTube. You know Cooper got the wall too. Let us give you a walkthrough. 40 chess. This is 40 chess. What's up, everybody? Welcome back into the Dynasty Trade Show. Been off for a few weeks, but that kind of time of the year, championships got wrapped up. We uh, get a lot of that transition, the rollover into new leagues. We got league dues to pay. We got payouts to make. Everybody kind of getting settled in. A lot of people want to take a little bit of a break. Uh, I know uh, around here, around these parts, we would take a little bit of a break, a little step back. But also, we can't do a trade show if we don't got patron trades, man. Uh, and more than one. Sorry, Mr. Wonderful. I know you wanted like seven of your deals featured because it seemed like you were the only one. Yeah, we could have had a Mr. Wonderful trade show, you know? No. Pass. But this is this is the highly awaited, highly anticipated rebirth um, of the trade show. You know, we just need we needed you to bring us some yeah. trades. We still, yeah. Mike, I'll just let everybody know out there, if you're interested in being a part of the show, patreon.com forward slash South Harmon. We got there this week, Mike. It was we, we kind of crawled there, but uh, we're back. You know, we're back. We're, sc- we're scraping the bottom of the barrel. But good yeah, news man. is, even if you don't have a trade that you want featured, come join the Patreon anyways. A lot of good stuff going on. Join the five dollar tier. We just kicked off on Monday night the mock draft series, round one NFL mocks. So being a part of the Patreon, being in that five dollar tier or above, that's what gets you in the door and gets you access to be your own GM for your favorite team or maybe just a team you find interesting. But making the picks, making the picks, it was fun. I had a couple teams. Uh, I did not take the Eagles. I thoroughly enjoyed watching them get their ass beat. On, took uh, them charges. Wild card weekend. So uh, you know, go I took some other charges. Teams. Go. Yeah, and uh, I think I made people mad that I passed on Brock Bowers. Saw Four. that. Saw Malik that. Neighbors. Let's get a stud wide receiver up in there. We don't need no tight ends. I live that A-warp tight end life in NFL Draft 2, app. <laughs> yeah. We may have to, you know, address um, some things about, you know, consensus group picks. Like, yeah, nobody wants to see Marvin Harrison go to the Patriots, so let's make sure we don't do that, right? Like, yeah, but Come on. Come on. What are we going to do? You know? What are we going to yeah, do? We, just, we need more participation, just like in the trade show. But, Adam. Let's hop it off, man. Let's, let's get, get back at into – the McNutted series of life, Mike. So you're in a you're you're. I mean, this is uh, what a way to kick it off. By the way, so we got shit wars, um, Mike. You're in a startup right now. If you're looking at this and you're kind of looking a little funny eyed, you don't have to be. You know, it's not just you. Everybody's looking at the same thing here. Somebody is trading the 609, which was it looks like at the time already picked. Um, you can't imagine you're just going to trade the 609 before picking. So they make the 609 pick. This is my understanding of it, Mike. They make the 609 pick, which is Matt Gay. That's a kicker. For those of you that draft, you understand you're drafting kickers or placeholders for the rookie picks. And then gets a little bit of cold feet on that rookie and all of a sudden decides they want David and Joku. Is that what we're looking at here? Apparently. Apparently that's, they would have rather have taken David and Joku or didn't see he was available. Anyways, uh, it was in my inbox and I was like, oh, this home run slam dunk for me. Uh, David and Joku, Joku for me wasn't a thought. Not that he's bad, okay? But let's just preface this and explain why this was so easy for me. The pick is the 109 rookie pick in 24. It's a two quarterback, two tight end league, best ball league. With all that being said, and I'm pretty sure there's a healthy premium. Uh, let me pull it up here too. I didn't even really yeah. look at the scoring. Like let's, I, let's do it. It's it's so weird that I don't really look at scoring anymore. 
Like I, the first thing I do is look at a warp chart. Yep, <laughs> like, it, it's it's I it's our way of looking at scores. scoring. You know. <laughs> yes, yes, but uh, I'm pretty sure there's a tight end premium. Yeah, uh, one point two five tight end premium. So that means a bonus, not just extra point two five, a full point and a quarter <clears> more than what wide receivers are getting. Pretty healthy for a two tight end league. And uh, Adam, if you still go look at the warp for ship wars too. Uh, you'll still see that tight ends, for the most part, don't matter. Yep. <laughs> they just don't. Yep. And uh, I like David Ajoku. It was a it was a nice end to the season. Uh, he had a great playoff game too. Like put up numbers in the playoff game. It was awesome to see. You're gonna tell me I have the potential of possibly getting a rookie quarterback. I have the possibility of getting somebody like Brock Bowers if we to fall that far now. If the league's already showing this much hype for David and Joku and wanting to, you know, essentially <clears throat> trade the 109 for Joku, I'm sure Bowers is. It won't be Bowers, be probably, free. right. But one of those wide receivers, and you can kind of just tell by the warp chart, too, like, you know, if I'm in like that wide receiver 30 range, I'm already better than most tight ends, <laughs> period. Like, it's yeah. a bigger advantage to me, and that's not a real high bar, even for a rookie uh, to come in. Like, you're going to see like Jordan Addison types, right? Like, that's. That's a realistic case, and that guy was, what, the 107, 108 last year? So just for reference, we're just kind of in that season where, uh, for whatever reason, rookie picks tend to get a little bit devalued uh, because it's just a, a number, right? Or in this case, a kicker, but the kicker represents the number of the pick. And that that feel good, that, man, I just watched Njoku do this. Like, you know, that hype is still there. we got eight months till we see David Njoku ever play again. <laughs> <laughs> like eight months where something bad could happen. Hell, the guy's lit himself on fire once at his house. He had another household accident. I mean, knock on wood because I love the guy and I love seeing him play, but he seems like we should put him in bubble wrap for the next eight months so nothing bad happens to him in the off season. Yeah, I mean, you know, you argue the side of, I'd say, logic, Mike. <clears throat> I would say the one thing you could honor on the, car- on the counter argument would be I mean, he was so close to death, such a near-death experience that look at him now. I mean, he's not going to let any day go by without he's the best invincible. version of David and Joku being out there. So I guess it depends how you look at it. Um, if you're a you know super superhero believer, or if you're a you know logic believer. But no, I mean, I would say in general, the way you are, you probably would rather have taken the pick if you had it at the 612. Like, had this person not tr- taken the 10, it's 108 or 109, you said? 109? 109. 109. 109. Had they not taken the 109, you're probably taking it the 612 anyway, right? Yeah, because immediately after I, you know, I was on the turn here, right? Because he's trading for the 612. I took the 110. <clears throat> right. So it would just been 109 and 110. <laughs> and he's like, man, I was really in between this or I didn't see David and Joker. I'm like looking at David and Joker a little more after I made the pick. That's who I'd rather have. Um, Mike's like, yes, I'll take your 109 happily, and I'll take the 110 subsequently. So that worked out. I think that <clears throat> what you're seeing, though, Mike, really in this trade, and this is going to be something I think we touch on not just in the trade show but in in South Harmon, 4D chess, whatever, the pick value, so the rookie pick, okay, or the startup picks, one of the biggest issues I think across um, Dynasty for people that when they make trades at this time of the year is really having that conversion in their mind of, what is a startup pick relative to a rookie pick? What is a rookie pick relative to a startup pick? And then what is a rookie pick without a name? What does that look like with names on it? And if you think about that, this is somebody that actually made the pick. So they actually pressed the button on a rookie pick. And then because they didn't know what the player was, whatever the case may have been, they got so unsettled and cold feet on it that they traded back three spots so that they could actually pick a player. Like this is literally watching... Live time, somebody that even went against the process to make it just a pick and remove names and couldn't do it because it was Matt Gay <laughs> and they needed to have David and Joku and I, I couldn't even I couldn't even pull an ATM. I couldn't even counter. I was just like this dude, this is a, don't overthink this, Mike. Just hit the damn button, move on with yourself. <laughs> when you're already in the W column, sometimes you don't want to just, you know just hit the layup, <laughs> right? <laughs> just hit the layup. Yeah, you gotta sometimes too. You gotta read them like twice. It, it, it might be a little bit confusing, anyways, because like you see, like six oh nine for six twelve. What the? Am I reading yeah. this right? Right, right. <laughs> like, okay, who they take at the six? Oh, the one oh nine. Gee, I was gonna take that anyways. Yeah, okay, hit the button quick before you mess this up. Like, don't, don't, don't think too hard about this. So, yeah, 
easily yeah. rookie pick for me. No offense, David and Joku fans. Uh, I know two tight end. You can argue it, but let us know in the comments what you think. I just with with all the a warp, everything that we've looked at for for tight ends, warp in general for best ball leagues, even even two tight ends, <laughs> heavy tight end premium, like that's pretty substantial. Still, just don't really matter to me, man. <laughs> like, yeah, just, and, and I'm gonna build a tight end room with uh, tight end one, Josh Oliver. Like that's gonna happen, Adam. <laughs> I think too, um, you know, just on the player analysis side, I love David Njoku, the player, and he he's showing a lot of the high end upside that we've been wanting for years out of him. But remember, a lot of his really like tear the league up success has come with Joe Flacco at the helm, and not that he can't do it with uh, Watson or any other quarterback they have there, but um, that was where we saw a lot of his success, and he's probably not going to have Joe Flacco at quarterback, as you saw how the game ended. Anyway. Let's move on. Mr. Wonderful has been waiting for probably about four weeks for this trade to be aired on this show. So let's get to it, man. Mr. Wonderful is giving us a trade of Josh Allen, Cole Komet, and Rashad White. So he is receiving Josh Allen, Rashad White, and Cole Komet. Sending away to Zeus the Assassin. So if Zeus was an assassin, here he is. Sam Laporta, the 101, the 111, the 302, and the 305. These are all 2024 picks. So it's Sam Laporta, 101, 111, 302, and 305 being sent away to in return get Josh Allen, Cole Komet, Rashad White. This is a 12-team, two-quarterback, two-tight end, full PPR with a one-point tight end premium. So it's two points per catch for the tight end. Best ball start 12, the Premier League. Mike, where are your thoughts at, buddy? I mean, there's some parts that I like uh, for Zeus on the bottom side, like just kind of the the behind it but it's tough it's tough right like if i were to break it down uh cole Komet for the 111 i'd rather have the 111 we just talked about it right basically and cole Komet's even worse than david and choku and i know the 111 is worse than the 109 but uh, i'll take the draft pick pretty easily i guess like the way i'd probably break it down at least in my head adam for me the 101 and sam laporta for josh allen Best ball league, I think you could probably make a case for either side, but Josh Allen's just so damn good uh, from a war perspective. I think it's a fair price to pay for Josh Allen, and I'd probably rather, even in best ball, prefer Josh Allen. If this was lined up, this would be no question. Josh Allen all the way. Uh, but Caleb and you know Sam Laporta, kind of best case scenario for you in best ball, you get that quarterback. You know, like QB seven. Six, seven, eight, somewhere in that range, kind of off the jump. I don't think he'll produce like that right out the gate. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> but production wise, <clears throat> Sam Laporte is awesome, but he's still the tight end, man. Um, like, I'm a big proponent of still selling Sam Laporte if people want to pay, you know, two first generically for him. You can have him and I'll figure something else out. So, Sam Laporte and Caleb, Josh Allen, I'll cancel that part out. The 111, the thirds for Rashad White and Cole Komet. Straight up for, like, Cole Komet, I'd rather have the 111, but you throw Rashad White in there, who was pretty damn productive at the running back position, just tore the Eagles a new asshole, too, uh, <laughs> who didn't on that Tampa Bay uh, offense in the playoff game. I think both of them, best ball, like, I'll pay the two-thirds and the 111. I feel like, okay, I'm getting Cole Komet back at tight end. I don't really feel great about it, but maybe this is how Mr. Wonderful likes to play with his tight ends anyways. Um uh, <laughs> Full stop on that one. Hell of a quote. Get that one. Get that one, Christian. But uh, well, Rashad I'm out, White, I'm out Cole here Komet. trying. <laughs> I know, man. Rashad White, Cole Komet for the one eleven, the three hundred five, and the three hundred two. I'm I'm really okay with Mr. Wonderful side <clears throat> on the top. I don't yep. think it's like a a total slam dunk. I just I don't really understand why you would get off of Josh Allen. You know, for mm. a tight end, Dan you know, a rookie quarterback coming in. Unless you're going, like, super full rebuild, but even then I don't – it ain't like you have to get rid of Josh Allen. He's going to hold a lot of value for a while. Yeah, I mean, when I look at this, like, the cleanest way for me to view it – or it's it's not that off from what you said, or but I would just go, okay, Rashad White and 111 are close in value in my opinion, right? And then – so if I just try to kind of took those to the side said they're close in value, not saying that I would take or prefer either one just value-wise. Then I would say Cole Komet for those two-thirds – um, probably in the two tight end league with a full tight end premium makes sense value wise. So I kind of say those are similar. And now I'm looking at just right here, right now, 101 and Sam Laporta versus Josh Allen. And I think if I if I can do that and kind of say what the crux of the deal comes down to, like I love Sam Laporta. And in best ball, you could tell me the two for one, you want to have the extra piece. But 
I know how valuable Josh Allen is, and I know how I'll play, speaking of the way Mike has it, like I know how I like to play with my tight ends. And the way I like to play with my tight ends is to get the cheap ones. I don't want to have, you know, the big expensive Sam Laporta. So for me, I think when you look at it, like the deal can make sense. <clears throat> and But if I look at it and I also think about the pieces out, right? If I just look and say, okay, Josh Allen, Rashad White, Colt Komet, or Sam Laporta 101 and 111, everybody in the world is going to say they'll rather the Josh Allen side, right? So the two-thirds here, while they're important, to me, when I'm getting off a player as supremely talented and as meaningful as Josh Allen can be, the extra two-thirds, while in best ball, we talk about tearing down all the time, I think there's kind of levels of evaluation, right? If I'm talking about getting off of a player like Josh Allen, and in the crux of the deal, I can maybe argue I'm netting a couple thirds. That's probably not the way I'm going to get those couple thirds. And I think that's the final point I'll make. While you could argue a lot of the values are similar and that the trade on the surface makes sense. And if you're a multiplication asset guy, maybe I want those extra thirds. For me, when I'm including Josh Allen versus the unknown 101, <clears throat> Josh Allen for me. That's the way I'm going to kind of look at this one. I'm with you. I'm with you. Yep. All right. All right. We got it in. It was a long-awaited <laughs> Mr. Waterfall trade here. Yeah, I was going to say it was – poor kid probably felt like it was forever. But, yeah, uh, just for us to make puns about. Just for him – just for us to ends. talk about his tight ends, you know. So, <laughs> all right. Let's get back to it. Grieve Bo. Uh, I think that's it, right? Grieve Bo. Lamar Jackson in a 25 third. Or a Shockwave 360. C.J. Stroud in a 25 second. I mean, so I'll just read the settings real quick. 12, team, super flex, PPR. It is a point two points per carry. Best ball, start eleven, shit ball. Like I mean, th- this one for me, honestly, pretty easy. Um, I love Lamar, I do. But if you're telling me just in a vacuum, I'm going from a second to a third. Like even if you have C.J. Stroud in the same tier as Lamar, I'll just take C.J. Stroud. And I think right now, there's people that would argue that C.J. Stroud might be in the tier ahead of Lamar. So I don't understand this one, frankly. Um, I'll take that shockwave side every time. Yeah, I'm with you, man. It, it feels like the Lamar side should be the one getting the second, just with the way Stroud's ascension has been. And it's not just recently, right? It's not right. a quick reaction just to the playoff. It has been this whole second half of the season, right, where people are like, damn, CJ Stroud's good. And you and I have talked multiple right. weeks at this point. All right, like how high are we ranking CJ Stroud now? Is he pushing? Is he pushing for this? Is he pushing for that? I think personally for me, like I'm, I'm in a position now with CJ Stroud where – I'm doing myself a disservice if I'm not, you know, shopping them around or trying to sell them. Sure. Um, but I'm not giving the better pick <laughs> to get the worst quarterback. I, I say that in quotes, right? For those of you listening on the podcast form, that's in quotes. Okay, the worst quarterback. Uh, I think they're very similar, but the hype is all around CJ Stroud at this point. He is on a rocket ship. So, uh, yeah, if anything, uh, the heady move would be like getting Lamar in the second. <laughs> like, not the. Uh, not Lamar, uh, the Lamar side giving up the second. I don't, I don't understand that one. So I'm with you. It's pretty easy shockwave for me. Right. That that's 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 the big thing for me is like, I mean, Mike, I I just you know went through recently doing rankings and I I have C J Stroud. I do have him technically in the same tier, right? Um, but I have him as the fourth overall quarterback and I have Lamar as the seventh overall quarterback. So like. Just tier wise, like if you just tell me in the tier, like this is, I think, a perfect trade to talk about. If you just say, I'm getting a player in the same tier and I'm netting the better asset, I'm going to take that every time, um, almost always. So, like, let me ask you this question then, Mike, just to make sure this is, this is how you can really tell. I love doing these type of actual hands on exercises to ask the question and find out if you really have them in the same tier. So, like, if the answer ends up being no, you probably should re- assess your tiers. So, Mike, would you take the second in Lamar if we flip flop this? Would you take the Lamar side if you netted the second and third swap, or is that not enough for you? I think I'd need a little bit more. Okay. I think I actually would. Like and, they're, and, they're in <coughs> different tiers for me. So then that's the case, right? And and that's where for you, like for me, I probably would still take the Lamar side if you gave me the second over the third. I'll still give them the same tiers. Yeah. So to me, though, that's a great way. If you don't know if you have them in the same tier, go through that exercise. If someone swapped me a second and a third or a second and a fourth or something like that, would I take the other side? And if the answer ends up being no for yourself, you ain't got them in the same tier. You got to reassess those tiers, you know? 
Yeah, we're not really too different on them, right? Just looking back and forth, I updated my ranks pretty recently too. You have them in the same tier. Uh, C.J. Stroud at four, you know, Lamar at seven. Uh, I'm C.J. Stroud at four, Lamar at five. But the difference between us, like when you, man, man, Mike, you're even higher on Lamar than Adam is. Closer, but you got C.J. Stroud in the tier, tier ahead. One. I got gotcha. you. Makes tier sense. One. So your tier one is four four players now with C.J. Stroud. Four players included. right now: Mahomes, Hurts, Allen, and welcome in C.J. Stroud. And I think the community reflected. I also saw some polls and some trades uh, just today, right on on X, especially after this Eagles game, where like people are talking about like, should you make this trade? And it was Jalen Hurts and a twenty six first for CJ Stroud and some like thirds and some shit. Yeah, I was like, what? This is where we're at. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> now now if you go into that context, I'm taking the Jalen Hurts in the first side all day long. Exactly, I'm taking Jalen Hurts and any plus that you give me all day long. And but, and I guarantee you, <laughs> given the way the Eagles. Lose uh, what they lose six out of the last seven, right? Or was it seven yeah. out of the last eight games? Whatever it was, and the way he he played down the stretch, you know, getting that sack and the safety, and there's probably going to be people pushing C.J. Stroud ahead of Jalen Hurts in rankings. Not saying that that's correct or not, but uh, when you're talking about just the swinging of the the assets, C.J. Stroud is Crazy. on a rocket ship towards the top, yeah. and most people still probably have Patrick Mahomes at one, which people are going to debate that as well. So it'll be interesting to see what what rankings do. Um, but either way, that one is not close because the C.J. Stroud side had the extra plus. So free money is free money. Um, all right, let's get into this trade here. 12-team Superflex PPR, a half tight end premium, a uh, half point tight end premium, sorry. Lineup start 10. On the clock is the league name. Love that. XX Days Seeker is trading with Buck and Champions. So trying to uh, channel that Baker Mayfield Super Bowl ring here. Cooper Cup, DeAndre Swift, Gabe Davis, Mac Jones, Demario Douglas, and the 101 being acquired for the 103, the 105, the 203, the 306, the 312, Keaton Mitchell, and Trey Palmer. Mike, where are you at? All right, Gabe Davis, Mac Jones, uh, Pop Douglas, Trey Palmer, Keaton Mitchell, all of those guys almost equally irrelevant in a lineup start 10 for me mm-hmm. i just don't care i'm probably not starting any of them keaton mitchell and mac jones probably have the most appeal out of all those because that's potential right like mac could start two three games you're gonna know when he's gonna start keaton mitchell is a running back could have a role at some point where it's right. like possibly fill in startable the wide receivers i don't care man sorry gabe davis uh i tried to tell people a long time ago got argued with on twitter uh, we saw how that went <laughs> I'm still going to get a big contract this offseason, though. Kinda yeah, funny. for sure. No question. <laughs> so, so, so so then, but if you if you do it that way, right? Right, so I just you're... take all the junk out. Okay? okay. So it's really Cup Swift and the 101 for the 103, you know, a couple thirds, the 203 and the 105. Mm-hmm. Now, you upgraded from the 103 to the 101. Adam, I would say just for that luxury of the pick, I really want to pick second in the Superflex rookie drafts. Third kind of feels like not that we're moving too far out the tier, but you're getting the ass end of the elite, right? Like you're you, getting you're getting, it's you're getting be a great pick, if but you, you don't cr- get a choice, right? It's basically if you have if you have a litter, right, a litter of puppies, you're getting the last one. You get whatever whatever whatever's given right. to you, right? You have no have you have like no say it. in the matter. <laughs> yes, yeah, you're gonna have to like it. One hundred one, you obviously get the first choice. The one hundred two, you don't have to pay one hundred one prices, but you also put the onus on like the one hundred one to. Are you going Caleb? Are you going Marf? Like, make up your mind, buddy. And I'm going to yep. go whichever way you don't. Um, the 103, it's like, I'm going to get May if I'm left over. Maybe I get lucky and somebody takes May at two or Jaden Daniels or Neighbors or whatever. Maybe something like that happens. But it's not a rosy outlook. So there's a worthy up pay from the 103 to the 101. Mm. That being said, the 105, 105 now, right? Versus the 105, Cup and Swift. The 203 and the thirds. For Cup and Swift, essentially. Right. So, so, so this is where, like, for me, Mike, just to kind of add in. So, the 101 and the 103, depending on what you're really trying to do and how much you value that, like, I, I'm willing to probably pay a sizable amount if I really needed to and had the luxury ability to do that, right? But right. when I think about 105 now, you talk about the same thing. The difference is if you make that tier five, if we throw neighbors into this tier and we throw Daniels into this tier with May. So if you can consider those five, if you're telling me I'm getting two, right? So I feel like I'm getting the middle and I'm getting the end now and I'm getting off of Cup who's going to be a a trailing downward asset all offseason. And if I'm even getting a 203 for Swift, 
oh man, we're having a different conversation all of a sudden now than we were having just for that 101 to 103 spot, right? I like DeAndre Swift. I rank him fairly high in Dynasty, you know, for my running back ranks, but he's still a running back. Keyword running back. <laughs> 203 or DeAndre Swift at this time of the year? I will help you pack your shit. <laughs> DeAndre Swift to kick you out the door. <laughs> Cooper Cup or the 105 is not even close. Not it's even not, close. Cooper not even Cup or the close. 203 might be a conversation. It would be, correct. Okay. So, I mean, I like going to the 101 because I get the choice, but I'm not paying all this other shit for it. I'm not. Uh, I like the other side. I like Buck and Champion side on this one pretty sizably. <laughs> yeah. I will be willing to give up my 101. Cooper Cup, DeAndre Swift, you know, Gabe, Mac, Pop Douglas, you know, those pieces that don't really matter. I guess, you know, the only thing, like, I would critique it is it's just, like, if I'm taking shit back, like, getting extra, they're willing to throw stuff at me. Mm. Just don't make it a Trey Palmer. I guess maybe I could sell Trey Palmer on the touchdown from the playoff game, but, like, you just have to understand that's a piece that's probably <clears throat> dead on your roster unless you can move him somewhere else. Yeah, like, I mean, it, Trey Palmer or Pop Douglas I- – Sure, I'm out. I'm swapping sure. assets to make this deal happen. Fine, you can. I'll take the Palmer side. I'll take the Douglas side. Mike, I do think what's interesting about this though, I think in a lineup start ten, I want the Buck and Champion side, right? I will say in a best ball league, all of a sudden though, the entire left side, I'm looking at a little bit differently in a best ball league, right? Because they have some meaning, right? Gabe yes. Davis will have some value. Mac Jones, we talked about that, and Pop Douglas could have some exactly. value. Exactly. As, as a depth, you know, wide receiver six, seven type. Yeah, man, yeah. exactly. <clears throat> so, it, it's um, – this one, I think, it, it, knowing your format's key. This is one of those trades where – I'm not even going to say that, like, you know, all of a sudden if you made this best ball that Day Seeker destroyed this trader. It's a home run. But Correct. it's it's – to me, the, the assets as a whole are much more appealing in best ball if I was getting that side. But in lineup start 10 as it stands, I'm going to take that other side. I think, because this is the way I look at this trade if you're a day seeker. It, if that 101, whether you take Caleb or Marv, becomes like transcending dynasty, you could you could win the league. But that's what you have to hit, I think, for what you end up paying here. Like You need that player to be you know, an arm's length away from everybody else in this class. Um, and I like Marv, and I like Caleb a lot, but, man, that 105 is just – that 105 is the part of the deal. It just it makes it too tough for me personally. Right. Those mid-round <laughs> picks all of a sudden, right, are starting to gain some steam as we get to the offseason, huh? That 105 so just – now, does it? Bro, that 105 just looks so damn different, man, all of a sudden. And we haven't even we – haven't, we don't even know what's happened yet. There could be more – there could be more <laughs> upside swinging in this. So, speaking of upside swinging up into this, wow, look at this craziness. How okay. And when does this get done? <laughs> I'm hoping this is one of those trades we couldn't air last week or two weeks ago or three weeks ago or something. Maybe like six weeks ago so more so. Um, because <laughs> here's what we got 12 teams, Superflex PPR, half point tight and premium, lineup start 10. Respect my dynasty. So, I. This one's one of those, um, you know, I guess, what would you call it? Like, if you have a dollar. Right in your pocket. If you're someone that carries cash till today, if you have a dollar, let's call it, and someone's going to give you even let's say a dollar and fifteen cents, but it's all in change. Most people will say, "I'd rather have that single dollar," right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's the way that. I look at this damn trade, especially in lineup leagues, because, like, okay, we are looking at the corpse of Rashad Bateman. All right, as a guy that was a shoddy B truther at one point, like this is the corpse of Rashad Bateman, and there's no real track for Bateman to somehow break this open. Like, Zay Flowers is dominating. Odell Beckham was getting uh, snaps and playing well when he got them. Likely came in and maybe earned a little more snap share than he had when Andrews comes back. There's no path for Bateman to be relevant, really. Josh Downs, we'll see if he really can earn um, some targets that are better next year with a guy like A. Rich coming back. But that's a guy that runs the ball more than he's a you know, passer like Gardner Minshew just likes to chuck it around. And then you got Roshan Johnson, who could not take the backfield at all from you know the guys in front of him. He's still a talented running back, I guess, but it's I value him as in any running back on the 53, really, more so than anything. So if you're telling me I'm getting rid of those three pieces when I just kind of break that down for you, versus Rasheed Rice, who is becoming the number one like option in the Patrick Mahomes offense and is looking really good the more and more he's played with him, come on, man. Come on. <laughs> It's kind of a weird thing, too, because I think you and I have done a recap 
multiple times, you know, through the season where, you know, I kind of brought up Rasheed Rice, you know, we were like, he was solid, you know, six for 80 and a touchdown, you know. Yeah. Hey, I think this might be the last week you can buy Rasheed Rice before it takes off. And we never really had that, like, rocket ship boost, which is crazy, too, because I go look at Keep Trade Cut. We just saw him go off in a fucking playoff game, right? Like a nationally televised playoff game. Rookie wide receiver, go off. Had a very solid season. Somehow Tank Dellstone ranked above him. <laughs> Somehow that's still a thing. I don't get it. Um, gonna be good for you if you really like Tank Dell. Zay Flowers is somehow still above Rasheed Rice. Adam, I gotta ask you, point blank, where we're at with Rasheed Rice now? You you've seen the season. It was solid. It's Patrick Mahomes. It's Andy Reid. It's a, an offense devoid of receiving mm-hmm. weapons. Travis Kelsey has taken a step back and looks like he's already like one foot out the door for retirement <laughs> at this point. Mm-hmm. With Rasheed Rice doing this as a rookie. How many rookie wide receivers would you rather have than Rasheed Rice on your team right now? Um, so I got, let's see. Well, clearly Puka Nakua for me um, Very is, fair. Yes. is like by far and away. I'll still take JSN. And then after that, I think you can start having a debate. I, I'll put it like this, though, Mike, to, to give you the, the honest truth about my rankings. And the way that we talk about the receiver position, I tier the same those guys now i'll prefer uh rasheed relative to most of them okay like in just technically ranking order but this is again a tier thing where if you're telling me i'm gonna lose rasheed rice but i'll get back zay flowers and some type of a plus every single time i'll take the zay flowers every single time i'll take the tank dell if i'm getting the plus but just one for one i'll rank rasheed rice better but they'll be in the same tier for me so i'll put ahead of him I think two receivers cleanly in this rookie class. And then after that, you could put, if you told me that he's your wide receiver two or three in this class, I'm not going to fight you. Like I'm not putting him ahead of JSN, but I, I could see the case for you saying the only one ahead in this class I'll take is Puka. And I, how could you fight that? This is a guy that's dominant in the Patrick Mahomes offense. I, how do you not like that? It's a realistic conversation. And I, I think the the hype is still kind of lagging on Rasheed Rice. Um, <laughs> the crazy part about this one, Adam, even if this was best ball, right? You know, the three for one, essentially. Right. I still take the one because the three are kind of poopy. I mean, what tier do you got Josh Dowd? <laughs> like, how many tiers below is Josh Dowd versus, uh, you know, Rasheed Rice at this point? It's a lot. Yes. And whatever it is, Bateman and Roshan aren't enough to make that up. And right. you want me to just give a fourth just because? Just We'll just chuck that in? I mean, like, th- this is one of those where, Mike, I don't know if it's being sent or you sent this out, but, like, this fourth for me is just, if it was in my inbox... I'm just like, okay, sure, I'll take that. Why not? Um, it's free. I may end up completely whiffing on this 406, or I may not be able to move it, but I'll, I'll happily take that. Yeah, in best ball, I think the thing is you don't have any um, weekly upside outside of a injuries to the Chicago backfield, and, like, Roshan's going to get, you know, 90% of the work or something like that. Like, if that was the case, that's your only upside, I really think. Not that Josh Dunn doesn't have upside week to week, but – totality season wise we know the upside's far and away on the Rasheed Rice side so um pretty easy one for me sorry old I, mean, I love you but you know that's just not not one I, I don't know do. what the uh the the stats are right as far as uh comparing so the 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 player comp that kind of comes to mind not like play style but just from a fantasy value like rise portion mm. is Brandon Ayuk's rookie year you know, just how like how much I bought into Brandon with Rashid like, during this. Yeah, with Rashid, yeah. just the production wise, where it yeah. kind of went under the radar, and then you saw in the off season it exploded up to mm. to crazy levels, and then obviously bad shit happened for for Ayuk. You know, getting in Shanahan's doghouse was not good, but now he's back to just being the dominant. You know, top ten, top <laughs> twelve receiver. receiver yeah. yeah, but I mean the thing yeah, that's really nice man. about go ahead. You know what's crazy? What it was crazy? Rashid Rice actually had a better rookie season. Um, on the in, back in, half, in some stats than uh, oh, Brandon I, Ayuk did. I don't even think that's that crazy because Ayuk really started to come on late, but he was a slow, a very, very slow starter. And not that Rasheed Rice wasn't, but might put it like this too, from the doghouse perspective and all that. The Niners, since Ayuk's been there, have constantly had a lot of these weapons, even before CMC got there, right? Mm. Like, what does Rasheed Rice have in front of him? All these corpses and whatever will become of Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. I mean, since Taylor Swift has come into the mix, bud, uh, you can say whatever you want about this, but this is the curse, all right? Travis Kelsey was a man that could do no wrong until this whole thing happened, and now this guy looks like a corpse of himself. So just, I don't, for me, there's not, like, you have Mahomes, who's 
a transcendent talent, and you have the guy that he clearly trusts and wants to get the ball to. Yeah, I mean, to me, you know, wide receiver two to wide receiver six, he's got to be somewhere in there in the class. You want to tear him all, you want to tear him ahead. Like, I could see a lot of it. But to me, it's just a lot different than that other side in the lineup start 10. Even in best ball, I'd probably rather have just the Rasheed Rice side. So, um, all right. Ooh. Okay, Mike. 12-team Superflex PPR, half-point tight end premium, lineup start 10. We're in a lot of lineup uh, lineup trades here. ACBS. So, it's ACB's dynasty, I'm thinking, is what this is. I don't know, but here's what I do know about this trade. We got Trey McBride, Josh Palmer, or a 112, and a 26 third. This is interesting, Mike. I mean, I just look at this pretty clear as like the 112 or Trey McBride and the 26 third or Josh Palmer in a lineup start 10. Which side you got? Uh, I take the third over Josh Palmer pretty easily, but I'm taking Trey McBride. <laughs> over the 112? Listen, I talk my shit on tight ends. Like those middle ones, the Njoku types, the Evan Ingrams of the world, the Cole Komets. Like, you let those guys go. I wouldn't trade Sam Laporta for a back end first. Adam, no way. Like, he commands too much more. All right, we talked at the jump of the show. Like, I will trade away Sam Laporta, but it's for, you know, multiple firsts. Something in that range. Uh, you want to give me, like, the 104 for Sam Laporta. You want to give me the 105 for Sam Laporta. That's what we're talking about. You know who's right behind him in my dynasty ranks? Trey McBride. Yeah. You know, even after Brock Bowers, you know, if he gets top five draft capital and goes to the Chargers and gets to play with Justin Herbert, you know who will be ranked after? Trey McBride? It's going to be Brock Bowers. Like, that's kind of where you're at. So, and you probably don't have to take him with, what, the 105, 106 rookie pick if you really wanted him. Mm -hmm. I don't think you got to spend the 104 to go get him. So, right. this is pretty easy, Trey McBride, for me. Now, I'd rather have the process play of just taking the third over Josh Palmer. Uh, and just getting in a lineup start 10. But uh, I have no idea how Joe will pu- pull this off. He found somebody that hates tight ends more than I did, obviously. A lot more. Even I got my limits. <laughs> Even I got my set. Oh, wait, wait a minute. What are we doing here? <clears throat> All right? Well, This is just selling <clears throat> to sell. J- just to be clear, give me, let, let's do the would you rather. Okay, so 111 or Trey McBride? Oh, Trey McBride. 110. McBride. 109. McBride. 108. McBride. 107. 50 50. Okay. No, so no 107 is where the combo starts, right? Know my league, right? Okay. Know my league. All if, right. if it, and also, too, with the draft, how many quarterbacks are going in the first round, right? That's where you kind of get in the 50 50. If we're going to get like four quarterbacks in the top 15, you're going to tell me there's a possibility I get a top 15 drafted rookie quarterback with the 107. Mm-hmm. I want the 107. You tell me it doesn't happen, we only get three. You know, it's one, two, three, right? You know, we just did that mock draft last night, and it was uh, the first three picks were all quarterbacks, right? Uh, Caleb Williams, Drake May, you know, Jaden Daniels, one, two, three. And then you don't get that fourth quarterback in the first round at all? Okay, now we're looking at, you know, Marv, Neighbors, Brock Bowers. All of a sudden that 107 becomes like, what am I getting here? Am I getting like the third wide receiver? Am I getting the fourth wide receiver? Uh, you know, do I have to take a tight end in like, uh, you know, Brock Bowers? Is that going to be the best value? I'd rather have Trey McBride in that situation. So that's probably where it gets 50 50. And then from there on, like 106 or McBride, I'll take the six. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so like, just to give you an idea, right? This is why uh, the warp tool, in my opinion, is such a big deal. And Christian, you know, cue the warp up. Um, but if you just take a look at it, right? Th- this is where I think knowing warp in your specific league is such a big deal because. If you think about it, all right, if you're going to play the A-Warp tight end game, you could say, I, I could see Ship and Trey McBride off. But just to give you an idea, I just pulled the second half of the season. So uh, weeks when 9 McBride through 17. Played. Yes. Yeah. So weeks 9 through 17, he's tight end 3 in this league. Now, okay, but what does that really mean, Adam? Okay, so tight end 3 is a .852 in Warp. I mean, you're looking at basically the same as what Puka Nakua was for teams, what you know DK Metcalf was for teams, what Rasheed Rice was for teams. Uh, better than even Rasheed Rice. So, point is here, this is where, you know, even in a half-point tight end premium, if you see it and you believe in the process of the player that you're getting at tight end and you can, like, point to specifics where it says warp might mean that this makes sense, I can understand going to get the tight end and I could definitely argue for the Trey McBride side. I, I think I'll still take that Trey McBride side too as well. 
I, I think the big tiebreaker will come down to how you play. Like, are you somebody that really just is going to, no matter what it gets to, you're shedding off tight end value for forever? If you wanted to take the 112, fine. I just, I think you could also, the way I play and the way I think you could even play if you wanted to shed the A-warp life, like you wanted to just get rid of tight ends, I think you could probably find a way to get a little better than the 112 would be my my personal like thought on it. But I want the Trey McBride side. I think Mike wants it. If you guys are, you know, people that are more like Koopa, we're going to go to completely a war tight end life. Let us know in the comments if if we were wrong on this one. But I want the chill wheel side. Feels awfully light. To yeah, me. feels awfully, awfully light. All right, last trade here, Mike. And shocking that it's two people. Mister Wonderful's back. <laughs> blitz with blitz. All right. We needed the we needed the bottom part too, so we could see who those picks were. Oh yeah, um, we sure what did. What are we doing here? Damn Come it, on. blitz. All right, well, uh, Mike, let's let's just look at it from the standpoint maybe, maybe of startup values. They they they, they, they probably haven't because six twelve isn't picked, nine hundred one isn't picked, so they probably don't actually have. They probably haven't actually happened yet. So let's just discuss okay. it from startup ADP value and what we do have in the players. All right, well, that's actually perfect because I'm in two startups. So you know, bang. What, what better way to look than uh, see what the shitheads are drafting? Bang. All Where right, these are going. Let's do it. So this trade really, in essence, Mike, it comes down to this. And everybody listening, 12 team, two quarterback, two tight end, full PPR. It's a 1.5 tight end premium, a .25 points per carry. Best ball start 12, America's game with no A. Now. And no Eric, apparently. Well, yeah, that's why. Maybe no, you Eric's can't, in it. I don't know. Well, if he, I was going to say, it's you can't have Eric in it because they, they didn't even feel like they could do the whole America's. Like, they felt like, yeah, this is a knockoff, like America's game. America's you know? game. Well, anyway. 401, so, so the way I look at this is as who's Blitz, he is trading up from the 401 to get the 302 and acquire Brees Hall, all right? So go get, you're going to get Brees Hall, you're trading away the 401, and in order to do so, you have to move from the 601 back to the 612, and the 901 back to the 912. So that's the cost to go get Brees Hall from the 401, right? When I look at this now, so the 401 mic, to give you like clarity, becomes the 106. So let me just ask you in a vacuum, in a best ball start 12 with a .25 points per carry, two tight end, two QB, 106 or Brees Hall? Brees. I would agree. Brees. I would t- I'll take Brees there. So now the question becomes, if we look at the South Harmon ADP, and uh, I'll do, I'll pull... I'll have uh, Christian pull up the South Harmon ADP on in front of this trade so you can get an idea of the players in that range. Mike, knowing the South Harmon ADP or at the, some of the startups you're in, how big of a difference is the 601 to the 612, let's say? Let's just start there. Ooh, uh, so a draft that I'm in right now, uh, we, we kicked off the trade, <laughs> uh, the trade show with that one. The 612 was David and Joku. Right? Yep. Two tight end league with a pretty hefty tight end premium. <laughs> Similar value. Wow. <clears throat> kind of weird that uh, this comes full circle. The 601, Dalton Kincaid. Mm. So from Kincaid to Njoku, what do you think about that? Or uh, or some other things like the range. Uh, Stefan Diggs to DK Metcalf, you know, Drake, uh, Kirk Cousins, uh, Bryce Young, Kenneth Walker to, you know, Rashad White, Rasheed Rice, another yep. uh, trade show <clears throat> favorite, Tank Dell of the world yep. i would say this not a big deal at all actually like i i don't really give a shit if i was picking at 612 or if i was picking at the uh you know end of the fifth it's yeah. basically the same shit to me yeah and, and i'm looking here at the south Harmon adp this this may change you know this is literally because there's there's you know only so many drafts that are drafting right. placeholders it could change different so i'm going to just talk about like five three to five players in the range so right now you're looking at like the five tens dk 5'11 is Zay Flowers, 5'12 is Trey McBride, and uh, 601 is pick six, rookie pick six. So, I mean, that's a, that's already a lot different than the 401. But right. if we just look at the players, okay, and then you're talking at 609 is Kincaid, 610 is Watson, 611 is Adams, 612 is Debo. Like, if you just told me right now that I have to get rid of DK or Zay Flowers to go to Debo Samuel, I mean, you, you already know I'm not a Debo guy, but I'll do that in a hurry. Like that's I'm fine with that. You know, I'm good. I'm um, in a best ball start 12. I look at it. Again, Trey McBride to Dalton Kincaid. Would I rather have Trey McBride? Yes. Is that going to be a, a deal breaker for me in my best ball leagues? No. So I don't mind going from the 601 to the 612, given like what I'm probably going to have on, my, on the board, right? 
Correct. Let's do the same exercise, 901 to 912 now, Mike. Uh, the 901 for us was a uh, uh, pick by me, Russell Wilson, or Daniel Jones is also right there, Matt Stafford. Um, you know, Will Levis would kind of be in that range. Uh, Dallas Goddard. Um, and then going back to the back half, the, the, the back part of the nine, ninth round, Brian Robinson, Pat Fryermuth, Geno Smith, uh, Tajay Spears, Calvin Ridley, Aiden O'Connell. <laughs> That's kind of the range that you're in right there. Yeah. Again, Mike, though, like the difference between uh, Daniel Jones and uh, Geno Smith, is it much? No. Nah. Russ I mean, and Gino? it's a preference. Oh. It's a preference thing, right? Like you're, you, Rogers, you could prefer. Rodgers and Russ. Rodgers and, and Daniel Jones, no. Uh, for quarterback-wise, wide receiver-wise, like Mike Evans had a great year, right? Chris Godwin also went in the early part of the ninth round. But you got like a Calvin Ridley down there. You got a Hollywood Brown, a Terry McLaurin type, Cortland Sutton. Like, it's kind of all the same shit, ain't it, really? Like, even moving back in the ninth round, it's like, I don't care if I'm picking up the first half or the back half. Obviously, you want your first choice, but it's a lot of the same dudes, if you ask me. It'd be a big-ass tier. So, when I look at the ADP, right, now this is one where I I think it probably depends on your draft, and if you look at startup ADP, you could possibly make the case if you're talking a receiver, right? Because you made the case, like, you're looking at Evans, you're looking at Godwin. You're looking at Amari Cooper. So these are guys that you're going to have to hold on to. They're not going to be trending the right way in the startup. But ADP values, um, at least for what we have right now, say, I mean, this is crazy. Nine eleven, Dontavian Wicks. Um, but like you're talking, then you know you got Jahan Dotsons, you got your Romeo Dobbs, you got your Hollywood Brown, your Deontay Johnson. So like for me, if I was getting specifically Deontay from those guys, I wouldn't feel that bad about it. But a lot of these other receivers maybe aren't like I definitely would prefer the ones in the front of of this when I look at ADP I'll just say though generically by and large like the way I look and value players um there's enough guys being drafted here where like the way I value specifically players this one would be a a bigger issue potentially if you're like locked into what you want to do for me just being water and seeing that there's other scenarios too like um, you could get, you know, a guy like Cole Komet if you had been waiting on tight end. You can get um, plenty of running backs in this range, a like Jalen Warren, um, you know, even even Baker Mayfield types are here. So I, I'm okay making this trade up if you think that Brees Hall has no chance to get to you at the 401 and you really want to go secure in a .25 points per carry uh, league winning run, type running back. So um, I could see it from either side, frankly. But for me, the way I play, if you feel good enough about locking up Brees Hall – this cost, generically in best ball, because it's all one for ones, not that big of a deal, right? Yeah, I, I think uh, if I'm going to side with anybody, it's going to be blitz on this one. Agreed. The yes. who's, um, like moving up from 401 to 302 is a much bigger jump than with the exercise we went through with the rest of the shit, right? It's just not enough. Like it feels like, like you should be giving up like an extra pick. Right, like a, a rookie second or something along those lines, or uh, you know a startup tenth. You know, maybe instead of the ninth round like swap, it's like yeah, I get your extra ninth rounder. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna move up in the the sixth round, but I'm gonna get your ninth rounder outright and yes. because it's best ball. Like okay, that's enough of a difference for me. Right, I'm doing the the asset multiplication game. If, if you let me do this shit one for one, actually, I'm kind of impressed. You know, we're going to do a lot of startups, and uh, we'll see how many people pay attention to this. And mm-hmm. Adam, get in some of these random startups with me, bud. <laughs> get the Fisher, the Fisher oh, yeah, ranger. For sure. But we're going to see if we can't pull some of this off, right? Like, if you yeah. let me do this, where it's like, yeah, yeah, don't worry. I'll let you trade up a full round in the sixth. And, you know, I'll even let you trade up a full round in the ninth and the tenth if you want. Uh, but just let me jump you one round here, the uh, the third where it matters, or the second where it matters. This is like a fish deal to me. <laughs> no offense, Mr. Wonderful. We took your side earlier, but I, I like the blitz side. Kind of sneaky <clears throat> shit on, shithead on shithead crime here going on. Yeah, I mean, I think this is one of those. Can I tell you, too, like, I agree with the assessment. If you make me lean one way or the other, I'll take the, the who's side. I do think, though, Mike, the case for the other side comes down to when you look at that 302 range right to the 401 you if you're not a running back guy or you don't want to like invest into that asset even in best ball right here 
Like the 302 probably is that range where you start to say, I could pivot to the 401 in the way I play or the way I'm going to value stuff. It's not that big of a drop off because you're getting in that range. Like you're into this quarterback land where there's nothing, there's nothing there that's secured, right? Like yeah. you may not necessarily look at the players in this 302 range because a lot of ADP right here, Mike, is showing you, you know, Kyron Williams, Travis Etienne, Saquon Barkley, uh, Sam Laporta, Jalen Waddle. That it's one of those where if you have a player, I think, in this range like a Brees Hall that you can go get and say to yourself, yes, I want this player. He's in a different tier for me. But if you're not someone that's like going to be drafting running backs early and you have a hard time like saying, I'm going to invest into these types, I can understand what you're doing here. Um, but I think this really comes down to probably just manager preference and how they view assets in this range because that it does feel like a dead period from those the clear-cut like studs into the next tier. It, it just occurred to me too. Blitz didn't even move back in the ninth round. Oh yeah, two out of, two out of three of these sites, he's I'm, moving up. I'm out here. Round. I'm out here misrepresenting the trade. <laughs> that, that's fit. I I was on board too. That's how I read it in my mind. But I'm looking at it. He actually moved. You got up. a swapped up. <laughs> oh my gosh! And the, you know what's crazy? What did I say? If I was gonna take, if I was gonna have a problem, the swap back in the ninth was the problem. I'd love to swap up in the ninth, honestly. Given that I'm getting the swap up in the. All right, sorry, Mister Wonderful. This is not a wonderful trade, buddy. Um, oh, no. See, we're rusty. We can't even read the trades right. <laughs> I, you know, can I tell you what it was? To me, it's just this has to be the way it is. Like, I, this is, again, I talked about, like, in a creator, as a creator. Best like, case scenario. Yeah, like, looking at scenario. things a little more openly. Like, I just assume yeah. that that has to be that they're getting the ninth swap, too. No, you misread that. that. It was a good thing that lasted, like, what, one week now? We're like, yeah. nah, we're done with this open shit. <laughs> this was terrible. <laughs> terrible charles barkley T -R -B -L. i wonder i wonder how terrible. long like i really wonder how long like if you, you know how when you're listening to stuff like when we consume content you're listening like no 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 you're kind of screaming like how yeah. long were, were people screaming like no it's not how it is like how long until they caught it too yeah <laughs> that's all right we have some already at moments there it was a good way to end the trade show want us being yeah. a couple of uh you know dummies like we normally are so like at least Mike it. caught it. Like that could have been the way we ended the show without you catching it, and everyone just screaming at us in the comments. They still will, but it was awesome. even worse it's, it's somehow. I definitely think Mike. For me, it's not enough to go from the six hundred one to the six twelve. Um, no, if I'm letting you trade up almost a full round from the fourth to the third, straight up. Forget forget the ninth add in at the end. Right? Like nah. Mm. Yeah, the the fourth to the third is huge. Yeah, and I've seen it in the startups. There's so many good things. It's the difference between, you know, me getting like a the 103 or the 104 rookie pick and the 106, and kind of putting you in a different class of a tier. And also, like, and I talked about, you know, maybe for you this is a dead period, but or a dead zone. It's not a dead period. Sorry, dead zone where you don't really like Mike. But startups currently are showing me that like Brees Hall's the 204. So yeah. you're kind of like same, making that trade from the 401 to what you think is someone that's falling out of the second round. So. Yep. Um, yep. All right, Blitz. Way to flex out the way on your way out here, buddy. You know. Speaking Thank of which, it. if you want Blitz to have more chances to pick trades that aren't his own, Patreon.com forward slash South Harmon. Five dollars a month gets you in, and Blitz can pick out a trade that isn't just his, so he can put someone else on the show. Come check it out, man. Great community. Always some great banter, some great questions, polls, comments. Mike talking his shit, and also if you want to get into this you know chance to draft actual for your team we do a draft a mock draft with everybody that wants to having a chance to draft for their own team full first round really great time uh mike's crystal ball mock draft mayhem so go give that a check out patreon.com forward slash south Harmon. it's gonna be a fun one uh off-season content still coming hard i know we had a little uh pause with the trade show but we're back <clears throat> as long as we keep getting deals we keep putting out trade shows obviously 4d every single week you can check that out on Friday and Monday nights now live stream to go along with our Wednesday night live stream yeah. for the AMA. So things that uh, you love to see. And Adam, you got a new podcast out. For those of you who don't know and still haven't checked out, I don't know what else to tell you. We have our own podcast feed, South Harmon Fantasy Football. Not too hard to find. Yep. Just go out there and look. We have our own podcast feed, and we have podcast exclusives. Uh, I do interviews, spotlight series, interviewing other content creators, getting to know them behind the scenes. And Adam out here dropping the podcast of the year, in my opinion. It's only January, so, you know, it's a little true. shade. 
That's true. Plenty of time for somebody. To yeah. Just fuck with you. But leapfrog and leap leapfrog that in the second week is not going to be that hard. But yeah, highly detailed is the podcast. Go check it out. Appreciate that. You know, let's. All that matters, kind of like the Eagles. You know, at one point we were ten and one. <laughs> That's when my season ended. That's how I'm going to remember it. Hey, we had that season. We started ten and one. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Jason Jason Kelsey, you know, retiring as ten and one for Philadelphia Eagles, right? As far as I know, yeah. But Jason yeah, Kelsey's last year went ten and one. Yeah, yeah, the, your, the your podcast, podcast is fantastic. I love it. I love uh, listening to it. Solo episodes are tough to do, I know for a fact, but also kind of therapeutic, and I can tell you're getting a lot of stuff out of that brain. So yeah. hopefully, you know, we'll be a little bit more efficient when we're together. Absolutely, <laughs> man. You know, let, let you have, you know, your spotlight series, spotlight mic, spotlight all the people in the space. I'm out here just yapping and ranting away and a lot less in the noggin, clear and free, ready to go, because we're going to be back here. We gave you a little time off, right? We gave you a little time off. I know people were clamoring. They want it back. We're back. We're back. We're going to be back next week and the week after that and the following week. Make sure you're tapping in every Saturday morning for the 4D Chess Dynasty Trade Show. We're out of this thing. Peace. Peace. You're welcome, Zach. We're back, by the way. <laughs>